Welcome to the Big Easy Casino, Mardi Gras themed here in Hollandale Beach, Florida. Right behind me, you can see this used to be a Greyhound racing track with all these seats behind me. Now that it's illegal, no more Greyhound racing in the state of Florida. So this is just a big open area for people to sit and smoke and hang out. Why am I here at the Big Easy Casino? Well, this is about 20 minutes south from my house around Fort Lauderdale area. And actually this is the location where I posted my seventh ever poker vlog way back over three years ago. And this is the location of my most popular YouTube video getting over 220,000 views. That video was tips of how to beat one to no limit. It's my most popular video and it was right here at the Big Easy Casino in South Florida. So I'm back here today, decided to change it up a little bit. I've been playing at the Hard Rock, been playing at Coconut Creek a lot. I've been traveling across the country, Texas, Vegas, LA. I haven't been in here in over three years. They got some decent food. It's Mardi Gras themed, kind of like New Orleans. So I'm excited for that. We're gonna get down to the table. Gonna play some One to No Limit, which I know a lot of my followers out there play One to No Limit. So I wanna get in there. I wanna play some hands. I wanna get in the streets. I wanna see how it goes. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go over the poker hand that potentially saved my poker career. It's going to be a fun one. Let's get down to the table. Let's get to the action. Let's go. First hand here, I raise king queen over a straddle to $20, get three callers, check all the way through on an ace 10 10 board. Turn card queen, giving me second pair, considering that all my opponents checked after I checked the flop. I feel like I'm going to have the best hand a decent amount of the time, so I bet out $20 here. Everybody folds and we win. After folding for a few orbits, I pick up eight six of hearts from middle position. I raise to 15, get a couple callers, a side board completely missing, no equity, I check. Action checks all the way around. Turn card, king of hearts, bringing in a flush draw for me. I semi bluff and just like the first hand, no real tension here. Everybody folds and we win a small one. I haven't tried my hardest to play my best poker at a 1-2 no limit game for four to five years now. Usually when I'm playing 1-2 no limit, I'm just waiting for a bigger game, kind of messing around, or I'm drinking and drunk playing every single hand. Today for the vlog, I'm actually trying to play somewhat of good poker. I do straddle on the button here, trying to pump up the action on this table. There's a bunch of calls, five calls, and I check my option, and I flop the nuts on four, five, eight with two hearts. It checks to the player on my right who bets out $25. Pretty sure he's got a big hand. I'm not gonna slow play a hand this strong as in the nuts. You definitely wanna be fast playing at one to no limit tables, especially on draw heavy boards. I raise it up to $55. He's got around $150 left thinking if he'll make this call, I'll most likely shove and get called on most turn bricks. Back over to my opponent who calls for 55. And the turn card's a bad one. It is the Ace of Hearts. It's an over card to the board and it brings in that obvious flush. He checks with $100 left and I decide to check this one back. I'm never gonna be folding my hand, but by checking this one back, I can potentially get called lighter on the river and maybe even induce him to bluff. Plus sometimes we're gonna be beat. The final card, Jack of Diamonds, he checks again. I'm certain I have the best hand now, so I put him all in for his last $100. He doesn't snap call, meaning that we have the best hand. He then asks me, do you have a flush? And I say, no. He then thinks and turns over pocket tens face up 
and folds, kind of an unfortunate turn card. Any turn card that didn't put an over card to the board or a heart, I'm pretty positive we would have gotten paid off there an extra $100, but can't complain, flopping the nuts, red, green, blue, and white chips being pushed in our direction now. Finally, after about an hour of playing, I pick up a beautiful queen 10 of hearts, which looks like aces after the hands I've been getting. Over a straddle, I raise to 20, get four callers, five ways, $100 in the middle to six Six, seven, eight, two hearts, a massive flop for me. Two over cards, gut shot straight draw, and a flush draw. Going to be going all the way with this hand. Small blind player leads out for an all-in sizing of $40. I call very quickly for $40. Button folds. We're going to run out this board one time. Turn card is a nine, giving me a straight right away. And the river pairs the board. My opponent shows a nine, and then... Another nine for a full house. I have a straight. He has a full house. He's going to win this round $200 pot. So far in an hour and a half, I'm up $108. Next hand, I check my option with king seven offsuit and the straddle. We go a couple ways to king seven five, top two pair for me. Same player who folded pocket tens leads out for 15. I raise him right away to $50. He makes the call. Turn cards and nine of diamonds. He checks, I put them all in, he snap calls me, river cards a five, and he shows king jack for top pair with the jack kicker. I have top two pair with king seven, and we're going to stack this guy on our right. Again, I'm on the button. I straddle to $5. Everybody calls. Nobody races. So I check my option. And again, flop the nuts. 7, 8, 10, 2 clubs. Multi-way here. It checks the middle position player who bets out $15. I raise right away to $50. Like I said, not slow playing big hands at 1, 2. Small blind player cold calls this $50 raise before the middle position player announces all in and flicks his chips forward. He's got $175 in his stack. Back over to me, an easy rejam on this board. I go all in for around $300. Small blind player thinks, says a couple things, and folds his cards, and just like that, we're all in for a huge pot at 1-2. And we're holding the nuts the best hand possible. Now that we're all in, no more action to be had. I show my cards, Jack-9, and my opponent shows me a hand I'm not really too excited to be up against. Ace-9 of clubs. He's got a straight draw as well to a chop, and he's got the nut flush draw. Turn card in this $400 pot is the four of hearts. It's safe, but the river card is the six of clubs. Bringing in that flush. I get it in great, way ahead with the best hand possible, even blocking some of my opponent's outs. And he gets there on the river with the flush, and I lose this $400 pot. I was already up over $100, and now we're losing this big one. Man, this one hurts, even though it's not that much money of what I'm used to playing. It still would have been a nice pot to win. We were way ahead on the turn. And unfortunately, we just couldn't hold. I reach into my pocket and pull out a $100 bill to add on. I'm now in the game for $400, down around $50. I raise ace queen to $15, get three callers, four ways to three, five, six rainbow on this board. I'm not going to be betting. So I check, and the hijack player next to me checks as well. Turn card's a king. I could potentially bluff this card, but... I don't really like to try to bluff multi-way at a 1-2 no limit table, so I check this king, and the hijack player checks behind again. River card, final card, is another king pairing the board. I think ace high could be good, but I'm definitely not going to be betting, so when it checks to me, I check, and the hijack player now fires out a $30 bet. The rest of the players fold, and the action's back over on me. I just have ace high on this board. It's a paired board. He could easily beat me with any pair, but what kind of story is he telling here? I mean, he didn't bet the flop when I checked the flop. I don't think he ever flopped a set or a straight or even a pair. When the turn card came a king, and it checked to him again, he didn't bet the king, I think this player would bet a king because he's very aggressive. I think he would bet a pair on the flop. And then now on the river, it's less likely he has a king. With all that being said, I think he's trying to steal this one. So I decide to put in the light call with ace high for 30 bucks. 
Aggressive. I want to see. I want to see what you got. You call you. But you're the aggressor. I don't got shit. You win. You call you. I got. You're the aggressor. Mom. I got ace high. Oh, you're trying to steal it. See my car is good. Thank you. I gotta start being careful with my car. Nah, I have to call. Small, small cards, king, king. I think he's seen that shit. He just called. He didn't even think about his job, no. Button straddle. Start putting chicken yeah. tacker on my car, man. Raise to 15. He's going to scatter the licks way, no. man. That man ready to get buck wide open. My left eardrum is literally bursting having this guy to my left yell and scream the entire time, but he is funny and he is entertaining, I will say that. I finally get aces after two and a half hours of playing. I raised to $20 over a straddle, and of course, nobody calls, no action for me. You, you, you have to play for you home, man. You here, you, you here. I went to the car and cried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you skipped the main guy. Yeah, he's been a raise for that. Oh, that would have been a great raise. All right, it's late, 1 a.m., final hand of the night. I straddle, checks all the way to me. I just check my option. I flop second pair on 10-8 deuce with a flush draw. I just bet out here for $10. It's pretty hard to flop a pair. Probably should be checking this one multi-way. I get a call from the funny man to my left, and everybody else folds. Turn card is a jack, now giving me top two pair, but this does bring in some straights. Also brings in another flush draw as well. I continue for $30. He thinks and thinks and thinks and calls. I put him on a flush draw or possibly a combo draw. So when the final card is the five of diamonds completely bricking everything on this board, I think I'm going to get more value by checking to him, trying to induce him to bluff than Betty myself. So I check, trying to induce him to bluff, but he doesn't fall for it. He checks back this time. I show, and I win, and call it a night. End up cashing out here for $490. In the game for $400, that's a $90 profit before heading home. All right, guys, that is it for this one. As you can see, I dressed up in my most professional vlog attire. I've got the Jungle Man hat that I got out at Hustler Casino Live, and I got this nice little polo that I've had for about a year, haven't been able to wear, so I wore it tonight for you guys. Anyway, yesterday's session at the Big Easy Casino playing one to no limit, I ended up profiting $90. I feel like this session was just like the epitome of what it's like to be a one to no limit grinder. You win some pots, you lose some pots. I mean, I flopped the nuts twice, I flopped two straights, I got it all in for the biggest pot of the night, over $400 versus a flush draw, and he got there on the river. I feel like when I talk to a lot of one to no limit players, who watch my vlog they always come up to me hey I'm a fan of the vlog I watch your channel and then some of them will tell me about a bad beat that they had at one two oh last week I flopped two pair and the guy hit a straight on the river and I lost a $400 pot I feel like this is a great showcase of yeah that can happen to anyone I get aces I get no action I flop the nuts I lose but I will say I am happy with a $90 profit on the night anyway let's move on to the poker hand that potentially saved my poker career. I'm always for a little bit of story time and we're gonna tell a story here to close out this video. So let's rewind back to September of 2018. Almost six years ago, I had just started playing poker about three months before that in June or the summer of 2018. Before that, I was a CrossFit coach, I was a personal trainer, and I was competing myself to be a CrossFit Games champion. I didn't play poker, I didn't really know much about poker, and in June of 2018, I started playing poker basically every single day, trying to make it, and that was going to be my new potential career opportunity or career uh, choice is to try to become a professional poker player. I kept track of my wins and losses every day, the date, and then my total bankroll. And unfortunately, after about three months of playing in September of 2018, I have in my notes that I was down $350 lifetime 
playing poker. So my poker bankroll was non-existent. I was minus $350 after playing almost every single day for three months, one to no limit in Miami, trying to grind up a bankroll. Throughout the next two months, in October and November, I remember this vividly, I lost so often. I would go in there with 100 bucks, with 200 bucks, and I could never, ever win. And at this point, I was the brokest I had ever been in my entire life. I was so broke that I literally would have to drive Uber for a couple stops, instantly transfer that money into my bank account in order to pay for gas and food to get through the day. I mean, I was insanely broke. And the reason that I was insanely broke is because all the extra money that I had after bills and after rent was going straight to poker and I was losing in poker. And in November of 2018, I have in my notes, I was at minus $2,500 lifetime, lifetime playing poker. So at that point, November 2018, I had lost $2,500 total trying to become a professional poker player. Now that's not the way you wanna be going when you're trying to become a pro poker player. You don't wanna be going down, down, down. And I remember pretty vividly again in November thinking to myself, it was around the holidays, like Thanksgiving, like I might have to give up on this. I may have to quit. I, I don't think I should still be doing this. I mean, I'm dead broke. I'm barely paying my bills. I'm losing all the time when I'm playing poker. Now, I remember I was running bad. I would lose with sets. I would lose with aces. I would lose with straights. I would lose two pairs, but I'm down $2,500. Maybe I should quit. I don't know. I decided to keep going, and one day in November, probably right after Thanksgiving, I had a client in downtown Brickell. Brickell is a really nice uh, little city area in Miami, and I had about four hours before my client, and I knew that client was gonna re-up for a new package that was gonna be worth like uh, $700. So he was gonna pay me $700 uh, for a prepaid package for personal training. So I knew that this guy was gonna pay me $700 of cash in a couple hours. I decided I'm gonna go to the casino, I'm gonna try to play some poker. I'm down $2,500 lifetime, lifetime, let's try to get it back. So I remember I went to the bank, I took out $150 out of my bank account and I only had like $168 in there. So I left just a little bit left for gas and food, whatever. But like I said, I knew I was gonna get paid in a few hours in Brickell. So I go to the casino, I sit down with 150 bucks. It's like 12.30 p.m. You know, a couple one, two, no limit tables are going on. I get dealt in ace of clubs, queen of clubs. I'm in middle position, I raise to some amount and a couple of people call, call, and the flop comes down, king of clubs, four of diamonds, jack of clubs. So I flop a royal flush draw, huge hand, straight draw, flush draw, royal flush draw. When it checks to me, the pot is like 40 bucks. I'm like, I'm not gonna bet here. I wanna try to hit this royal, so I check. Everybody checks around, and the turn card is a six. It's like a six offsuit six, so I miss all my outs. I don't hit an ace, I don't hit a 10, I don't hit a club. It checks to me and I decide, hey, I'm gonna check again. So I check, action checks all the way around. Final card is a 10. 10 giving me a straight, but it's the best 10. It's the 10 of clubs giving me my first ever royal flush. A couple months into poker, I'm sitting there, 12.30 p.m. and boom, I hit a royal flush. I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. I bet a certain amount, everybody folds, I show my cards, I win the pot, I get my name and my hand up on the high hand board, which was worth a couple hundred dollars. And once I won the high hand, I won another couple hundred dollars for the royal bonus. I ended up winning $800 of high hand bonuses from that ace queen of clubs royal flush, which was huge for me. I mean, I was down $2,500 at this point in my life. I only had $168 to my name, and in one hand, I made $800 in high hand bonuses from hitting a royal flush. I ended up leaving that day with around $1,000 cash, went to Brickell, trained my client, got another $700 of cash, and I went back into my records. I still have notes on this way back when, and I went back in, and I could see that from that date, $2,500, I ended up clawing back out of the hole throughout that month of November and getting to even in the beginning of December. And then from December on, I continued upward and upward and upward and upward, and I never went back down below 
that negative mark, that negativeness of being a losing poker player. So I will say that potentially that hand saved my poker career. If I wouldn't have made a royal flush there, who knows what it would have happened. I could have lost that day. I could have got paid from my client and said, screw poker, I'm done, I'm not gonna lose any more money. But I hit a royal flush, I won the pot, I won the high hand bonus, and then since then, I cruised up and I ended up continuing on with poker, leading me to today making YouTube videos, playing 510 No Limit, playing some big games out in California, Vegas, and Texas. I'm super thankful for you guys for watching for the past three years. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit different, some small stakes getting in there. Next video is gonna be at Coconut Creek, I believe, at the new game that I started. It's a lot of action, it's a lot of fun. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see ya.